Hello everybody. I know you haven't seen much out of me because my internet's not been letting me stream, but um, the downtime has been nice. I was getting a little burned out, but decided to do something at least to uh, keep putting videos out and uh, just kind of had the idea of uh, reading the SCP articles for everybody. Kind of a calm, relaxing tone. I've, I've had a lot of compliments on my voice. I don't see it. But maybe that's just me being humble. But maybe this will help some people go to sleep or relax or whatever. Um, my Patreon page will... They're going to be getting short stories. And they can even submit fan um, stories uh, that I will read for videos. So y'all might be getting some original creepypastas or whatever anybody wants to throw at me. Um, from there, each tier has a limit to the pages that they can give me, because I don't want to kill my voice. Um, with the top tier actually having no limit, I will read the entire freaking book they write me if they, <laughs> you know, if they fucking pay that top one every month, for sure. But um, I'm going to be starting at SCP-002, just uh, because if you know the SCP website, which is Serve, Contain, Protect, it's a lovely website. Um, I've spent many hours reading these myself. Um, but 001 SCP is awaiting declassification, has several different things under it. I feel like that kind of needs to be its own video if I do it. SCP is a organization, Serve, Contain, and Protect, that... Um, contains anonymous objects. I always have a hard time saying that. But, um, and I'm just gonna be reading you all the way down the list. Um, also, to explain, because I just noticed the word, and, um, if I mispronounce anything, I'm sorry. I'm not the best <laughs> at, uh, figuring out how to say things, like, pronounce them out. Especially weird words like, the object classes are safe, which means they, it's not exactly that they can't hurt anything, but they're so easily contained that they're not going to fuck up the world at large. Uh, Euclid? Euclid, I think? Euclid? Oh. Um, it's basically kind of a mid-range. It's, uh, it's very dangerous, kind of hard to contain, but shouldn't destroy the world utterly if it gets out. And then there's Keter? 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 I think Keter. Which is, uh, yeah, they could destroy freaking everything and are hard to contain. Okay, so, this is SCP-002. This one is called The Living Room. A uh, fun wordplay, as you'll see. Item number, SCP-002. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-002 is to remain connected to a suitable power supply at all times. To keep it in what appears to be a recharging mode. In case of electrical outage, the emergency barrier between the object and the facility is to be closed and the immediate area evacuated. Once facility power is reestablished, alternating bursts of X-ray and ultraviolet light must strobe the area until SCP-002 is refixed to the power supply and returned to recharging mode. Containment area is to be kept at negative air pressure at all times, which means there's more air going out than there is going in. Um, I learned that uh, working on my computer case. Teams including a minimum of two members are required within 20 meters of SCP-002 or its containment area. Personnel should uh, maintain physical contact with one another at all times to confirm there is another person present, as perception may be dulled, skewed, or influenced by proximity to the object. No personnel below level 3 are permitted within SCP-002. This requirement may be waived by a written authorization from two off-site level 4 administrators. Advanced staff issued such a waiver must be escorted to by at least five level 3 security personnel for the duration of their contact and must temporarily surrender their rank and security clearance. Following contact, command staff will be escorted at least five kilometers from SCP-002 to undergo a 72-hour quarantine and physical evaluation. If deemed fit for return to duty by psych staff, rank and security clearance may be restored when quarantine expires. Seems to have a lot of effect on their mind going in there. 
Well, let's see. Description. SCP-002 resembles a tumorous, fleshy growth with a volume of roughly uh, 60 meters squared. An iron valve hatch on one side leads to its interior, which appears to be a standard low-rent apartment of modest size. One wall of the room possesses a single window, though no such opening is visible from the exterior. The room contains furniture which, upon close examination, appears to be sculpted bone, woven hair, and various other biological substances produced by the human body. All matter tested thus far show independent or fragmented DNA sequences for each object in the room. Refer to the Mulhassen report for details related to object discovery. Reference. To date, subject has been responsible for the disappearance of seven personnel. It has also, in its time at the facility, further furnished itself with two lamps, a throw rug, a television, radio, a beanbag chair, three books in an unknown language, four children's toys, and a small potted plant. Just with a variety of lab animals, including higher primates, have failed to provoke a response in SCP-002, which is good, the animals are safe. Cadavers as well fail to produce any effect. Whether the process the subject uses to convert organic matter into furnishings is apparently only facilitated by the introduction of living humans. Mulhausen Report 00.023.603 The following is a brief report detailing the discovery of SCP-002. Subject was discovered in a small crater in northern Portugal which struck the earth from orbit. Encased in a shell of thick rock, the fleshy exterior of the object was exposed by the impact. A native farmer happened upon the site and reported his findings to the village elder. The subject gained SCP attention when a level 4 agent posted in the area detected a small radioactive anomaly generated by the object. A collection squad of SCP security personnel, led by General Mulhausen, was immediately dispatched to the area where the discovered where they quickly secured the subject in a large container and performed the initial testing with subjects recruited from the nearby village. Three men initially sent into the structure subsequently disappeared. Upon discovering this deadly property of the subject, General Muthausen issued a level 4A termination order of any witnesses, roughly one-third of the village, to ensure no one outside had knowledge of the object and initiated a transport to SCP's facility, data expunged. You'll hear that and data reacted a lot, redacted a lot during these readings. I think it's kind of a meme. During preparation for transport, for security, SCP security of course, were inexplicably drawn inside the object where they too immediately disappeared. Following inspection, it appeared as if the object had grown several new furnishings and was beginning to look like the interior of an apartment room. General Mulhausen immediately ordered the requisition of several first uh, class 3 hazmat suits for the remaining security team members who proceeded to lift the container onto a waiting freight ship for transport to the SCP containment facility. Following the termination of General Mulhausen, SCP-002 was re-secured by SCP staff and brought into special containment in Classified, where it currently resides. Staff with clearance below level 3 have been denied access to the SCP-002 container without prior approval of at least two level 4 staff after the Mulhausen incident. So, those data expunges were whatever this general did after he brought the, um freight ship, or even while on the freight ship, um, bringing the object to the containment facility. Um, considering that it has to be plugged in for a recharge mode, I believe that it was able to influence his mind to order people to go in it so that it could um, make more furniture or something of the similar nature. I believe the data reacted and data expunged are there to uh, make you think. It makes it worse sometimes if you don't know everything about it, you know? It makes you wonder what they're getting rid of. I'm not going to do too many this time. Just because, um, I don't want to wear out my voice too much just because I'm not 100% used to this. I don't 
also know 100% if I'll even be able to use this video, so if I'm unable to do this and put it on YouTube and everything, I just kind of want to save myself a little bit of the time. Though I am really hoping that I'm able to. Now, item number SCP-003. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-003 is to be maintained at a constant temperature of no less than 35 Celsius and ideally be kept above 100 degrees Celsius. Really hot. No living multicellular organisms of category 4 or higher complexity may be allowed to come into contact with SCP-003. Roman numerals always mess me up. In the event of total power failure, if SCP-0031 begins to increase its mass, assigned personnel must engage in skin contact with SCP-003-1. Ideally, personnel may use their body heat to return SCP-003-1 to above the critical temperature. However, skin contact must be maintained even in the event of SCP-003 reaching activation temperature lasting at minimum until SCP-003-1 activates fully to its second growth stage. Personnel who enter SCP-003's containment area must first be examined for body parasites of category 4 or higher complexity and sterilized if such organisms are present. All personnel who have come into contact with SCP-003-1 are to immediately report for sterilization afterwards. SCP-003-1 must not be removed from SCP-003-2 except in case of emergency procedures detailed above. Any significant change in SCP-003-2's rune activity, including pattern, frequency, or color, should be reported within three hours of occurrence. Cessation of rune activity must be reported immediately. SCP-003-2 must be supplied with power by the source designated Generator-003-9 at all times. Told you, this is a bit of a mouthful. Description. This is where we'll get to see what 003-1 and 003-2 are. SCP-003 consists of two related components of separate origin. Referenced to as SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2. SCP-003-1 appears to be composed of chitin, hair, and nails of unknown biology, arranged in a configuration similar to that of a computer motherboard. Testing reveals that SCP-003-1 to predate earliest known circuit boards by a factor of thousands of years. SCP-003-1 is considered sentient but not actively dangerous except under certain circumstances. SCP-003-1 was found on a stone tablet, SCP-003-2, on which it currently resides. The runes on SCP-003-2 are not part of any known language and emit pale, flickering light patterns. SCP-003-2 is controlled by a non-biological internal computer, the contents of which are mostly inaccessible without risk of damaging SCP-003-2. SCP-003-2 is capable of controlled emissions of radiation, including heat, light, and anonymous radiation types. SCP-003-2 contains an internal power source of an anomalous nature, which appears to have been losing power since several centuries before discovery. It is considered probable that SCP-003-2 was created for the purpose of containing SCP-003-1. Partially interpreted interpreted data from recovered from SCP-003-2 may refer to a past and or potential future LK class restructuring event caused by SCP-003-1. SCP-003 was located by remote viewing team SRV-04 Beta. It appears possible that SRV-04 Beta was deliberately contacted by SCP-003-2. Other organizations have also been alerted to SCP-003's existence, possibly by similar means. Despite this activity, SCP-003-2 does not appear to be sentient based on its lack of reaction to M-03-Gloria analysis and procedures. 
when SCP-003 dash, when SCP-003 drops below the temperature of 35 Celsius, both components react. First, SCPS, oh, <laughs> SCP-003-1 enters a growth state characterized by exponential increase in mass. This growth state consists of two stages. In both stages, SCP-003-1 partially fuels its growth by converting matter around it, starting with any surrounding inorganic material, including atmospheric elements, then non-living organic material, including cells of dead skin, hair, chitin, enamel, keratin, fingernails basically, and other biological materials. The first stage is always the same. SCP-003-1 will first increase its mass, then take on a form similar in shape to a brittle star of 15 meters in di diameter, including what appears to be a central processor of 3 meters in diameter. It will form sensory organs that appear to scan its surrounding environment and will partially convert the air around it into an unidentified anomalous substance. SCP-003-2 seems immune from conversion. The second stage describes a growth acceleration which occurs when SCP-003 comes in contact with living organic material. SCP-003 appears to template itself off of the organic material and will attempt communication with organisms that match its initial template or templates. In its second stage, SCP-003-1 may pause, slow, or change its growth and will also convert inorganic and non-living organic elements into functionally similar structures while obviously altering their physical makeup. While growth is consistent in the first stage, in the second stage of SCP-003-1's growth rate is diminished by 20-90% to 90 as long as SCP-003-1 remains in contact with living organic material. The percentage is determined by the complexity of the organism or organisms in contact with SCP-003-1. SCP-003-1 appears to devote a large amount of its processing power to analysis of living organic material. During each of the SCP-003-1's growth stages, SCP-003-2 releases bursts of radiation that temporarily inhibit scp 003-1's growth or reverse this growth when the temperature of SCP-003-1 rises above 100 degrees Celsius. Similar radiation emissions have been replicated or recorded by, via other anonymous means. SCP-003-1's biology has been subject to intensive study. Significant elements have been identified similar to SCP-... blank... redacted... SCP... 1512 and SCP 2756, the latter two of which have no further confirmed connection with SCP 003 1 and even and no known connection with each other, and none of which are fully understand. Stood. Technically, even less understood than SCP 003, thanks to the extensive cross disciplinary research on the SCP 003 objects. To date, no convincing analysis has been put forward which satisfactorily explains SCP-003-1's connection to these SCP objects or others, nor its connection to modern science beyond appearance and potential mimicry by an unknown mechanism. Adding on information gathered from linguistics analysis of SCP-003-2's runes and comparative data analysis, research team M03-Gloria has managed to establish a link between SCP-003 and data expunged. For analysis of functions, SCP-003-1 must now be considered sentient and is to be kept a minimum of one kilometer from data expunged by the resulting and the resulting byproduct at all times. SCP-003-2's power loss has been exasperated by the procedures performed by M03-Gloria. On orders of 05-10, M03-Gloria will continue procedures. Adidium 003-03 During M03-Gloria's procedures, SCP-003-1 doubled its mass and began rapid structural growth. 
Temperature was immediately returned to zero zero oh, to one hundred degrees Celsius. I'm getting all of my zeros mixed up. Throughout the mass increase of SCP-003-1, continued for nine minutes and six seconds, at which time a sustained radiation spike was produced by SCP-003-2. In response, SCP-003-1 returned to its normal state in three minutes and 39 seconds. New growth dissolved into a dusty residue, which was collected for analysis. Both SCP-003-1 and SCP-003-2 ceased all detectable activity. SCP-003-2 did not resume activity until collected connected to external power source. SCP-003-2's runes glowed uniformly gray and did not resume normal activity for three hours. SCP-003-2 no longer appears to be able to maintain containment area at a temperature above 35 degrees Celsius without external power supplied by generators 003-3 through 9. Roman numerals, they keep messing me up. <laughs> I um, have decided not to read the clickable, unfortunately. Um, just because I do believe it is quite long. Oh no, it's not bad. Okay, I'll go ahead. Not bad at all. It's just I can already feel my throat is very not used to this much reading, despite the amount of talking that I normally do in my streams. It's not normally as um, consistent. <laughs> Adenium 003-04 The procedure detailed in Adenium 003-03 was repeated and ACP-003-1 again entered a growth state. After 10 minutes and 13 seconds, SCP-003-2 once again produced a sustained radiation spike. SCP-003-1's growth stopped for 36 seconds, then resumed at its previous pace. On quadrupling its mass, SCP-003-1 formed a coherent outer shell and body. After appearing to scan its environment, partially converting its environment, SCP-003-1 then breached containment, entering the observation gallery where nine members of M-03-Gloria were present. On physical contact with team members, SCP-003-1 encompassed them in, a rapidly grown, in rapidly grown appendages and stopped growth for 15 minutes. SCP-003-1 then resumed growth and rearranged the component parts of its center to form of its form to the shape of a three meter tall female humanoid, with perpetual tentacles shifting to extrude primarily from SCP-003-1's newly formed hair and spine. SCP-003-1 then produced rudimentary vocalizations in an apparent initial attempt to communicate with researchers. Data expunged. An unknown individual approached to the compromised containment area in a company of a full squad of agents. The individual claimed to be acting on orders of O5-10 and attempted communication with SCP-003-1. Data expunged. Following this incident, Agent Jackson of M-03-Gloria successfully restored power to SCP-003-2 and activated backup generators to return the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. SCP-003-1 returned to its normal state in 21 minutes and 7 seconds and was successfully recontained without incident. All nine members of M-03-Gloria, affected by SCP-003-1, were afterwards found to be physically unharmed with no resident res residual effects besides psychological trauma. The converted materials of SCP-003's formal containment area did not dissolve and are now under analysis. Adenium-003-05 In light of previous incident, O5-10 was removed from the O5 Council by joint decision. M-03-Gloria procedures have been indefinitely suspended. Transcript of Incident Report A-21-B Cycle 8, for dissemination to O5 Command and Staff. Expert, excerpt, 35A. She tried to talk to us. We all heard her voice in our heads in a sort of 
half language we couldn't fully understand. Some of the others passed out immediately and lasted a, a little longer, but it wasn't because of mental fortitude. It's just that she was trying to tell us different things. She showed Jones a replay of all the memories of everything Jones had ever felt anything about. All over the course of a few minutes, she ripped three of the rage searchers apart and put them back together unharmed. She doesn't understand human emotion or pain, or very much about how we experience the world. Yes, I would say the containment procedures are necessary. Listen, she wants to remake the world into a paradise. A paradise featured for her own alien understanding of paradise. But still, a paradise designed for us, for humanity. She would be happy to make a paradise for any sufficiently complex organism she comes across first. Anything with a complex enough mind to accept her. Say, a dog. Or a housefly. If she breaches again, we have to be there first. What would it be like? I don't know. She showed us images, not quite images. I can see them in my head, but they're not pictures. The closest thing uh closest thing I can think of is when you see when you close your eyes suddenly and tightly, but brighter and more complex. The images had metallic sounds associated with them, and sensory details that we don't have the words or concepts to describe. The whole effect felt like Words of some kind. I believe she wanted us to see what we could understand so she could understand us. She didn't have time to finish anal analyzing us. I don't know what would have happened if she had. Now you know why I want to read these. They're all very thought-provoking, I suppose is the best way to put it. I hope that you enjoyed my reading, and I will be doing more. Maybe this will be a way to help people sleep. Who knows? Have a good night, everyone.